Hey everybody, we're back and we're doing a video where I'm answering a fan's question. So Mark asked, hey dad, can you make a video about servos, how you set them up and what are your thoughts about the way people set up servos? And what I'm going to do is, if you don't know me, I love to build giant scale and I design virtually everything I fly. I haven't built a kit in over 20 years. I've put a couple of R's together. I've built off plans twice in the last 15 years that weren't mine, but everything else, I draw my own plans, I do my own CAD, I make my own airplanes. I learned a lot by doing that, okay? So let's dive into servos. And just so you know, I'm calling this servos 101, which means it's an absolute layman's term of servo, okay? If you want the PhD level course, go talk to the heli guys at Fly3D. They want speed out of those servos, they want torque out of those servos, and they are the experts at those type of servos. But if you're flying a scale airplane or a just an everyday fun general aviation type RC airplane, this video should help you. So let's dive into this. Many people will ask me, do I use high resolution servos? And here's, here's my opinion on resolution. I'm going to talk about this in layman terms, okay? This is technically not right but it will it will tell you the well how do i say that this is technically right it just the numbers won't match what your radio really does okay so if you move your stick up and down like on your elevator the neutral point i'm going to call zero so if you think about how many steps are in the radio stick which is going to go through a transmitter transmit it through the air it's going to be picked up by your receiver and shoved into a servo um if you go up 500 steps and down 500 steps, that should be a thousand steps of resolution. In theory, when you move that stick up and down, well actually when you move the stick up and down, the control service should have the same resolution. But many people don't understand how to set up their servos. And what they do um, is just a couple of no-nos, but they will put a really long arm on their servo, then they'll put a really short horn on their elevator or aileron. The reason they do that is they get huge amounts of deflection that way. But then they realize the plane's twitchy and it's almost unflyable and they go into their transmitter and they set their endpoints really low. So now that servo, which normally has 60 degrees of travel, 30 in each direction, they've only gotten it down to 10 and this surface is only moving what they want it to do. What you should do is put a short horn on your servo, a long horn on the flying surface, and make sure you're getting a full 60 degrees of travel out of that servo. That way you're seeing all, fictitiously, thousand steps of resolution, okay? I learned this the hard way by actually having flutter out of a surface because I had this really long arm on a servo. The servo wasn't great, so I had a little bit of slop. I had a really short horn on my flying surface so that when I moved the elevator, I had like 40 or 50 degrees, of tra I mean 40 up or 50 down, which is like 80 degrees of travel. But mechanically, I had such a short moan arm, when I'd move that elevator, the slop in the servo actually let me have about a quarter um, inch deflection. I was hauling ass down um, hill with it and my left elevator fluttered and came right off the airplane. And this was 15, 18 years ago. And I went back through everything I was doing, and then it started hitting me. I need to let that servo, the shorter the arm, the better the torque is on the servo. So I then started setting up all my airplanes saying, okay, how many degrees of elevator do I really need? If I need 30 up, 30 down, I then start putting the larger horn or setting at the largest setting out on the elevator, starting at the inside of the servo, the, the, the shortest arm on the servo and seeing how much I got. If I got 20, good. I might move down on the servo one hole or I might move up one on the horn, but I made sure that my deflection gave me the full 60 degrees of travel on the servo. And um, I had a friend one time come to me on an airplane and say, you know, my plane just doesn't seem like it flies right. He had a $3,000 radio that had unbelievable resolution. That re resolution goes through its processors, goes through the transmitter, goes through the air, gets sucked into the receiver, goes to the servo. In the servo, I kid you not, when you watched him move that stick, it clicked. 
the servo probably only had 60 or 80 steps of resolution. It was such a garbage $4.99 servo. And I'm not making fun of those. A lot of people, I own junk servos for some junk airplanes. But if you're flying scale or you're flying big airplanes like I do, which my passion is big airplanes, um, I have learned how to really get that linkage so that they're, if I move that control surface, I hear instant resistance on that servo. There is no slop. Okay? So, um, but on his airplane, one of the things that was also a big no-no was he'd gone in and set his endpoints so that that long arm was only moving about 10 degrees each direction, which means he's only getting about, about 20% of the resolution that his radio offered. But he also had a crappy servo on the other end, and that, that resolution didn't matter. So experiment, that's all I want you to do. The reason I do these videos is so you can do this yourself and see if it works for you. I'm not saying everything I do will work for you, but it will. Um, let's dive in more here. Now, now I'm going to talk about servo torque. And I don't know how many people... I'm trying to be very politically correct here. I don't know how many people absolutely don't know what they're talking about when they come to servo torque. Okay? So, let's... let's if you... Um, if you know how to set the, the length of the arm on the servo and you know how to set the length of the horn and that servo turns the flying surface, most 60 size, um, 90 size airplanes, your 80 to 120 ounce servo is probably going to be more than enough. Okay, Don't quote me on this because somebody's going to come back and go, Oh no, I got this airplane that won't fly on that. I know, you know a lot more than me and I'm, I'm happy for you. But when you start thinking of torque, most of the time you think about it is when you're building giant scale airplanes. Most of your 60, 90 size, or even your park flyer planes, you probably got enough servo out of just about most of the standard servos you can buy to fly those airplanes. But when we get into giant scale, it is a different world. Um, like I said before, if you know the travel needed and you know the servo is getting a full 60 degree, then you pretty much understand what the limitations of that servo is going to be. But there is some math behind it too. Okay, over here I'm going to show you um, uh, basically a calculator I created out of an Excel spreadsheet. And if you find me on my Facebook or you find me through my YouTube or my Patreon, I will give you this little. Um, file for free, but it basically takes the math from a document that was created for the AMA for their large model aircraft, um, basically they're that, you know, that, that whole uh, LMA, you know, that group of aircraft that are 55 pounds or over, okay? So the document is called 502A, and you can type in Academy of Model Aeronautics 502-A and you'll get this PDF you download and there'll be all the math to understand how big your flying surface has to be and how much torque you need. Okay, so all the math there, all I did was I took that math and put it into an Excel spreadsheet. So as I'm designing my aircraft, which if you followed me for the last 14 years, you know I love to design aircraft. I always use that math to size my servo, and so far it has been spot on right. So now let's talk about that torque, okay? Let's talk about how you set up your airplane. You can go out and buy the $250 or $280 servos that have 600 or 700 ounces of torque. Or you could use three servos that all have 200 ounces, and put them on the same flying surface. It doesn't matter as long as you're getting that torque to that flying surface. But always remember the length of your arm, the length of the horn, and the travel you actually need. Um, also your linkage. I don't know how many people, and I'm gonna show a video over here of some decent linkage on my little F4 and some bad linkage on my F4. So, um, or F4U, I'm sorry, not Phantom, Corsair, F, F4U. So my Corsair, which is a little park flyer, um, it has some problems right now. Keep in mind, it's 10 years old and I've flown it through trees and all kinds of stuff. But um, 
if you can move your flying surfaces and not hear any resistance on that servo, you've got a problem. I don't know how many people come to me and says, my plane is always out of trim every time I fly it. And on that control horn on the elevator, they took an X-Acto knife and augured out that hole so that clevis actually is loose. If you can move it up and down three degrees, your plane will never stay trimmed. So that's one of the most important things to think. Um, I'm going to try to close this video down. Mounting, you need to do your gut best to make sure that servo is mounted good into plywood, carbon fiber, or even aluminum, especially if it's a high torque servo, especially if it's 600 ounces. It can twist itself right out of balsa wood. Um, pull pull, everybody says it's the hardest thing to set up where you got the rudder on the pull pull. If the distance between the two clevises and the distance on your arm is the geometry is the same, pull pull is really easy. And I've done it a ton. You need to make sure you know where it lines up on the hinge on your rudder though. Some people will come ahead of that hinge and when you move it, one line will go a little bit slack. Okay. And uh, so that's pretty much it, everybody. I hope some of the illustrations and stuff over here help you understand what's going on. My passion for giant scale, I own uh, 64 servos right now, believe it or not. And um, they go on all the different planes and testing stuff I've done. Uh, the highest torque, I think, is 638 ounces or something like that. I should have written that down before I did this video. Um, but I hope this has been informative to you. If you got any questions, shoot me a message through YouTube, Facebook, or if you're one of my Patreons, ask me there and uh, rock on. And I hope you find this informative. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Take care, everybody.